we are going to start to dive into some data manipulation uh, via the dplyr package. Uh, essentially with, with R, R is a, it's a language that's kind of based on a lot of statistical functions and things uh, that are great to do, but uh, R is also a very, very good tool at just doing uh, data manipulation in general, uh, mostly to help set up for the statistical work that you'd like to do in R. Uh, most, most times when you're looking to do modeling or anything else, uh, it requires a lot of data setup. And uh, unfortunately, in the real world, data sets are not normally very clean, and it takes a lot of manipulation to get things in the proper order. And so um, the key to any sort of uh, data scientist or any other um, uses um, that you might be using R4 is probably a, a pretty important skill to get really good at uh, data manipulation as well. So what we're going to cover in this video is just various uh, manipulation techniques and these will be very specific to the uh, the library dplyr which is a package written by Hadley Wickham uh, extremely popular uh, one of my favorites and uh, let's go ahead and walk through it so with the data set uh, there is a package uh, called NYC flights 13 that that has a uh, a flights data set that we're going to go ahead and walk through uh, mainly because when I was doing some searching online I found this as a good uh, use case for some of these dplyr functions, so I thought I'd go ahead and use it as well. So if we want to view flights, uh, essentially, maybe we should get the dimensions of this just to kind of see what we're dealing with here. Yeah, so 336,000 rows, around 19 columns, and uh, this is just flight information. We have year, month, and day, which is important. Uh, the times of departure, if there's delays, uh, so, so the actual departure or the scheduled departure, if there's any delay, Arrival, schedule arrival, arrival delay. Uh, who the, it's a carrier code for the airline that did the carrying. Flight numbers, uh, looks like uh, tail number, origin, destination, some air time, distance, and then hour, minute, and time order. So, hour. So various columns within here. So if we go back to our script and we start to think through the various things of manipulation that we can do to this data set, uh, there's various ver uh, verbs within the dplyr package that, that we that we start to use um, as needed whenever whenever they're kind of useful uh, so, you know selecting filtering arranging mutating summarizing sampling and we'll <clears throat> get into pipe piping at the end so selecting uh, I started with this one just because it uh, it's the most basic in my opinion it uh, can't get much easier it's essentially just selecting different columns from your data set so uh, without the dplyr package as you recall if you want to select columns, um, the other way you could do this is use a comma for every single row, which is fine. And then um, you have an option of saying the first column, fifth column, uh, that sort of thing. So that's also a way to kind of uh, select various columns within a data set. And not, not at all to say that this dplyr version is, is better in any way, but uh, one advantage is that... Um, you don't need to list out the name of the data frame each time with a dollar sign and, and various things like that. There are some shortcuts. Um, I guess there's shortcuts in the other way too, but let's go ahead and walk through it. And, and because it's within dplyr, and as we'll get to later, you can you can use it along with some some piping techniques. Um, it can it's just a handy way to kind of select some columns quickly. So within flights, oops, I'm sorry. Let's start with the verb. So within dplyr, you'll, you'll notice these a lot of these verbs represent uh, their functions that represent various things. So you always start with uh, the name of the data frame, flights, and then we can just start naming out columns. So I want to, I'm going to pull up the the column names here so we can look at them. So here's 17, 18, 19. So 19 columns, and um, it doesn't get much easier than uh, just writing out column names. And it's another nice, uh, as I mentioned before, you don't need the data data frame prefix and the dollar sign at all. You don't need double quotes around them. Uh, one of the requirements is that all column names don't have spaces. So so you can get away with just picking a few columns in here, uh, month, destination, day, just various things like that. And uh, so, so when I ran this, it just pulled up a sample, but you know, it pulled the three days, or I'm sorry, the three columns here that I asked for. Um, in addition to that, just a few other kind of bells and whistles with this, um, if you call it that, you can kind of do a range. Uh, for instance, if I wanted every column between the arrival time and the tail number, instead of typing all these out or indexing 
which which indexing can be fast if you can say you know I want the fifth through the ninth column that sort of thing. 